good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little shorter than most. Um, first of all, good evening. Uh, I asked to speak on behalf of the group in the community uh, called Opt Out Manatee. It's a group of parents uh, supporting public education and their rights to be able to direct their child's education in the community. So I'd respectfully ask for a five minute time frame. Sure. Um, there are a number of parents by a show of hands that are here in support of our group. And um, I'm going to begin tonight with a story. Much of my message echoes what Kevin so wonderfully put. Um, but this story is um, from a, a resident that's running for school board on the other side of the state. She writes, the email came to me from a mother whom I've never met. It began by thanking me for my advocacy, and then she shared a story I am compelled to share with you. And I hope I can get through this without tears. Um, I had no idea a few years back the amount of mental anguish that the high stakes testing ca was causing students and teachers. It was after my son Andrew was in the third grade and he was administered the FCAT. He failed by one point. He took the mandated summer reading program and had an average of 86. He tested again and he failed by one point. Two days later, I walked into my son's room and saw him hanged from his bunk bed post. The belt tied around his neck, the cold blank stare in his eyes, and his blue tinged lips. He made the conscious decision at nine years old to try to end his life. The outcome is the most important part of the story, but the damage was done. Why didn't I see this coming? I had no idea the damage that high stakes testing had caused. I saved Andrew that day, physically, but mentally he was already gone. There was no academic research conducted to express the difference between a student who passed by one point or a student who failed by one point, except the student who passed did not try to end his life. High stakes testing is harming our children and that it is a chance that no one should bargain with. Please share Andrew's story. If this doesn't start to cause a change for the better, then we have no hope and no forgiveness. How did our education system fail so many children and families? How has our education system lost sight of what is best for our children? I thought that we were all on the same team with the interest being first and foremost about what is best for our children. And lastly, since when did our school districts stop being partners with parents and educators? Aren't we all on the same team? That morning I cried. So, mothers agonize over the decision of whether or not to allow children to test caught between what they knew was right and the fear of retribution from principals and staff. We saw the same story, a resolve to refuse, but incredible pressure at school, often laced with misinformation and threats. Teachers called us, the admins in the Opt Out Florida network, afraid of the paper trail of social media, to tell us of the threats associated with having too many opt outs in their classrooms. You have to ask yourself why. Why is there so much coercion to take this test? Why is it so important that we lose all sense of ethics, all basic conscience, all principles in the name of a test? I'd like now to share with you some comments directly from parents of Opt Out Manatee. First one, my sixth grader and I have been talking about opting out and she said that her English teacher told the class that if anyone opts out or fails the FSA, then they do not get any electives for the next year and will automatically be put in all remedial classes. This is not true. I was told Friday by Nolan Middle School's principal that if a student is on campus, they will take the test. He seemed angry when I said there was a decent sized article in the Observer this week on opting out. He snapped at me when I brought it up. <coughs> I'm a public school teacher in a different district. This morning, the assistant principal insisted that this was the absolute last day that my daughter could take the test if I didn't want her to be retained. I was informed verbally at a parent teacher conference this morning that any student who opts out of the FSA is automatically retained. The teacher said there is no fallback for any student who opts out like there is for a student who gets a one. I've asked for this information in writing. The parent never received it because it's not true. On a positive note, a seventh grader successfully opted out for the first day of testing. The principal was very supportive in the decision and so far the teaching staff has been too. Three months ago we didn't even know that opting out was possible. Thank you Opt Out Manatee, together we can make a change. I received a message this morning that my child's gifted class was canceled because classroom teachers wanted to keep kids from gifted to refresh them for testing week. I just want to know how Manatee County can justify providing services to gift, not providing services to gifted children, which they are receiving funds for when they are refreshing for testing and not providing the service. My daughter made a comment in one of her classes today about opting out and was mildly reprimanded by one of her teachers. He claimed that if she did, she would be forced to take either A, remedial math, or B, take both sixth and seventh math next year. 
Week two of No Gifted is coming up on the 11th. This time the class is canceled because the other school the gifted teacher serves is required to help her administer the tests. In regard to communication, here is an email sent to a parent that specifically claims that the FLDOE identifies participation as students responding to the test on a state assessment. The previous line says that this was new information from the district that came from the state of Florida. The FLDOE will not go on record defining the word participation and we already know that we meet that criteria. Additionally, very quickly, I'll skip a couple things. This is an email to the entire school board last week asking for your support to implement a directive in this district to stop the lies and the intimidation and the falsehoods that are being told to our parents. I received an acknowledgement from Mr. Kennedy. I did not receive a single reply from any of the other four board members. Very disappointed. <coughs> this is an email from a parent to Dr. Green that was sent three times beginning on March 11th to which she has received no response. Here's an email sent on March 15th to Mr. Cologne from a parent citing the Sarasota directive to take care of the opt-out movement and make things as seamless as possible. No response. Ms. Lee, if you could finish up. Okay. Thank you. Um, if you fight us, we're asking on what side you stand. We're trying to work with the district, and we look forward to moving forward. Thank you.